In this video, you'll learn how to add some Hollywood special effects to your video by removing a green screen background. We'll start by covering what the green screen effect is, then I'll give you some tips and show you how to use the green screen effect. So let's go ahead and get started. If you're using Camtasia to record a presentation or create software training, the green screen effect can be used to take your project to the next level. For training videos or presentations, it's helpful to remove any distractions or place the host in a different setting by removing the background. For software training, you can place the host right there in the software to guide the learner by using the green screen effect to remove the background. With a little creativity, I'm sure you can come up with a lot of ideas for how the green screen effect can be used in your e-learning projects. When it comes to using the green screen effect, there's a few things to keep in mind that will affect the quality. First off, you need a green screen. With a quick search online, you'll come to find that there's a lot of options out there, and many of which are inexpensive. You can buy large sheet-sized green screens, or I really like the kind that fold up because they're easy to stand up behind your desk. It also really helps to have some kind of lighting. If you have any shadows on the green screen, it can be really difficult to remove the background, so it's good to use the lighting to remove all shadows if possible. And my last tip is to be careful of what you're wearing. Avoid wearing any green or reflective jewelry. Obviously green clothing can make you look like a part of the background, and reflective jewelry or glasses can create a glare. If you're wearing glasses, try turning them slightly down. Okay, now that you're aware of what to pay attention to when using a green screen, I'll show you how to remove the green screen background on this clip I already filmed. The first thing I'll do is crop the background. I'll be removing the background completely, so it helps to start by removing as much of it as possible. Okay, now I'll need to go to the Visual Properties tab by selecting More than Visual Properties, and then I'll select the Remove Color option, because we're going to be removing the green color. After selecting the Remove Color option, I need to select which color to remove by opening the Color drop-down menu and selecting the option to pick a color. This will turn my mouse into an eyedropper that I'll use to select a part of the green background. And if you look closely, you'll notice different shades of green, especially if they're shadows. Try and pick the dominant shade of green and it will remove the background more cleanly. Sometimes this process takes some troubleshooting by reselecting different parts of the green background until you can get it just right. After selecting the shade of green, it will remove most of the background, but most likely it won't be perfect and you'll still see traces of green in the background. You can do some fine tuning using the sliders in the Visual Properties tab. We'll start by using the Tolerance slider, which lets you determine how sensitive the effect is. If I slide it to the right, it will remove more green, but you don't want to get carried away and slide it too much or it will begin to remove more than you'd like. Okay, now that I've got that looking good, I can use the Softness slider to smooth out any rough edges. Just like with the Tolerance slider, you don't want to get carried away, or it could make your image look blurry. Okay, now it's looking pretty good, but sometimes you can't get it looking quite right no matter how much fine-tuning you do with these sliders. You still might see a faint halo around the person. In that case, you can use the Defringe slider to reduce this halo effect from any leftover color. We'll talk about hue in a minute, but a couple of other options you have here are Invert Effect, which will hide everything except the green screen background, and we also have the reset option, which is helpful if you're having a hard time getting it to look right and want to start over. Okay, now that we have the green completely removed, we'll need to add the new background. For this example, I'm going to use the subtle gradient background, so I'll add it to the timeline in the track beneath the green screen clip. It's important to make sure the background is on the bottom layer so that you're able to see the green screen clip and any other media you'll be using in your project. Now we can preview it to see how it looks with the background added behind it. At this point, you may want to do some more fine-tuning by readjusting the sliders. In particular, the hue slider is helpful to adjust the coloring so that it matches the background more closely. Alright, now I've got the green screen background cleanly removed. This is a great feature in Camtasia Studio that I'm sure you can think of a lot of uses for. Remember that when it comes to using a green screen, the quality of the recording is important. If you have a lot of shadows or interfering colors in your recording, then it will be difficult if not impossible to cleanly remove the background. Now it's time to practice what you've learned by recording a clip using a green screen, then use the Visual Properties tab in Camtasia to remove the background. Be prepared to do some fine tuning using the Tolerance and Softness sliders to get it just right. In the next section, I'll show you how to make your e-learning courses more interactive using Camtasia Studio.